All right, and we are live for session four of Philip's campaign in our Buffer and Fury setting, um, Red Dawn. Go ahead and hand it over to you, Philip. Thanks, Baron. So last we left off our brave heroes of the Heartland, they were witnessing the capture of the great firebird Oswego, and they saw across uh, Sylvia the rabbit was scouting ahead of the party and climbed up a tree and was able to see all of these different coordinated movements by Volmer and his rat army they're using flags to coordinate and try to capture the firebird and finally they were successful and that's where we ended so Currently, we have Sylvia, several, uh, I don't know, leagues ahead. Not not quite miles, but quite a bit ahead of the rest of the party who is escorting a caravan with moles and food back to the refugee camp. And we'll go ahead and uh, kick it off with you, Sylvia. Uh, an introduction, you mean? Uh, no, we're just getting right into the story. Right into what, the thing. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I want to know is: Do I believe? Does Sylvia believe it is possible she could get to the camp and cut the ropes to free the bird, or would that be suicide? So you saw it was pretty far off it was one of the you know it must be two miles away where the bird was captured and the number of vermin that it takes to restrain one of these birds has to be pretty significant so there's no way single-handedly you'd be able to go in there and cut the ropes the other groups with flags are also in the area. So you know that there's a shitload of vermin in the area, basically. All right, well, better to report then. So I will uh, I'll try and get back to the group. I know about okay. the route they're taking and about how fast they travel, so hopefully I can get nearby where they are. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you're headed back to the group. Um, as you are headed back along the trail, I want you to roll a perception check. I got, um... Oh, wow, my perception's high. I got 26. Okay, so, yeah, you're 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 hyper-aware. What's your passive perception? That's what I should ask for. Uh, my passive perception is 18. Okay, that's definitely fine. So, um, as you are headed back through the trail, you hear one of this band of vermin with a with massive flags that they're carrying headed in the direction that you saw the firebird captured uh how many are there about 20 oh fuck never mind okay they're kind of, one they're led by um a fox there's a couple wolverine and um plenty of rats all right i'm gonna take um i'm gonna take a pot shot at them and then keep going okay what do you mean by pot shot i'm gonna shoot You're my gonna... bow at them and then i'm gonna dash away using uh cunning action okay Uh, 
Um, I got, where's my longbow? I got 18 to hit. All right. Uh, and which one are you aiming for? Uh, the, whoever, is there one flag that they're carrying? It's like a, a giant flag. It takes a couple rats to carry it. I'm shooting one of those guys. Okay. So, yep, go uh, 18 D6? will hit. Here it is. All right. They can take... That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They can take 18 damage. And how did you kill him? Where did you hit him? Uh, square in the head. And uh, he just happened to turn slightly as the arrow just went through his eyeball. So you see phew, your shot strikes true, hits him right in the eye. And you are able to like turn around and start running before the body even drops. And it takes his companions a second to realize. And they are going to shout, Ragir, no! Um, and the fox whew, looks right towards you, and he shouts, "Get the rabbit over there!" And um, what's your uh, what's your movement? What's your speed? Uh, twenty-five. Okay, so um, you were probably a hundred feet away, and you're running, and they are in pursuit. Meanwhile, back at the caravan, um, Charles, Baron, and Jonathan Holt, Gilderoy, and uh, man, Charles, I am sorry. I have your character's name. I always forget it. Nethouse. Nethouse. Thank you. That's right. So, Nethouse. Holt and Gilderoy back at the caravan. You guys are slowly creeping along. The moles pulling the cart. Um, and you guys hear the commotion of the firebird. Uh, and yeah, what would you like to do? Oh, I don't know what that could mean, but it doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. A uh, Holt would uh, like to uh, take, like, the front of the entire group, just sort of, like, skulking forward um, with his uh, flail drawn uh, right out front of everyone, just to, like, be in the front lines if anything comes up. Perfect. Uh, go ahead and roll perception, Holt. Uh, that's a 16. Okay. In the pathway, yards ahead, probably 300 yards ahead, uh, a little bit around a corner too, you can only see it kind of peeking through the trees, um, you see a band of vermin led by a fox carrying a giant flag with some wolverine. They haven't seen you yet. Oh, like stop my tracks and get low and just like hold my hand out for everyone behind me to stop. Great. The moles are... Just trying to... Yeah, the moles stop grunting and pick their heads up. They they know that some shit's going down. They're just listening to what this badger is saying. When you moved forward, they're kind of like, oh shit, to the front of the pack. Nethouse? Okay, what is it we see in front of us? A band of vermin led by a fox. There's some wolverine and rats, and they're carrying a, a giant flag. And they haven't seen us yet? 
they haven't seen you yet. Holt, all that you can see, I imagine, or you're in like the back of the caravan, and Holt is up front, and Holt has stopped the the caravan. And how far away are they? About three hundred yards, but they're kind of around a bend in the path. Okay, I'm gonna cast Sleet Storm. Okay. A uh, forty foot area, and then it goes up in a column too. And how, what's the distance that you can cast that? Hold on a second. Um, it's 150 foot range. Yeah, it's not going to get them from here. Yeah. I'll just keep quiet and see They're what happens. 100 feet away. away. Okay. All right, so Holt, you stop the caravan. After a while, kind of watching the rat troop continue, you see an arrow come and shoot one of them in the head, you can't really see where from this far away, and it drops. And you hear some shouting as the fox points in a direction off into the woods and sends... They drop the flag, and the wolverines and some rats go tearing off into the forest. Uh, have all of them... Uh, run off into the forest, or did they leave sort of like a small uh, portion of them behind? Yeah, they're, the fox stayed behind, as well as six rats. All right, well, uh, I'm just going to look back at the rest of the party, along with the uh, moles that are behind us, and uh, say... Uh, Looks as though the Sneak Thief has afforded us a bit of time. How about we have some fun? And uh, Holt will go off running with with his flail, just like swinging through the air. I'm pretty sure Gilderoy would kind of, you know, follow suit, maybe just a little bit behind. Um, more apprehensive, but nonetheless ready for a fight. Yeah, and Holt, as he's running, he's just going, ah, just swinging his flail through the air. Oh, shit. Okay, and Nethaus, are you going to follow him? How many of them stayed? Um, the fox and six rats. Guys, how about I cast Pass Without Trace and then we jack them? Uh well, unfortunately, yeah, I'm pretty Holt sure Holt just ran, yeah, ran for it, screaming, his battle cry. So you could stay back and cause and cast pass without trace on the uh, caravan if you want to like hang back. No, I'll just kind of follow him and try to get in at least somewhat range where I can start throwing spells. Nice. Okay. So you guys are running towards the rats. And Sylvia, you hear a roar that you know can only... And you recognize the battle cry of Holt. So you're tearing off some of these wolverines and um, rats are following you. You're going in the opposite direction. Like, you know, I imagine you saw, you were in the woods, you saw the uh, rat group, and then you started running into the woods, and they're further along down the path. So you're still further away than you are your enemies. 
Right, that's fine. I'm uh, I'm going to try and find a tree I can hide behind and use the hide action so that okay. they don't know where I am and then shoot at them and then run again. Okay, go ahead and roll the stuff. I'm going to try and guerrilla warfare this bitch. Uh, I got... I got 19. Yeah. Um, so you're hiding. Yeah, I'm just um, ducking behind a tree. Or maybe I like okay. climb up a bit, and I like move from the tree a little bit to shoot, and then I finish climbing the tree. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll let you hide and climb as an action, or climb and hide. It's. Uh, I'm using wanna... my. I'm using my bonus action to hide my cunning action because I'm a rogue. Okay. And so you're going to... Well, they see you. They see where you are. Oh, uh, I didn't I didn't hide very well. Yeah. Oh, well. I still shoot at them. Okay. <laughs> Just without okay. advantage. Yeah, and without sneak attack dice. Mm-hmm. Um... That's going to be 17 to hit. As you... And what did you aim for? I'm just going to try and uh, wear down the mice or the rats. Okay. Um, the rats are well armored and your arrow bounces off of it. With 19, really? Damn, you, or 17? Yeah, with 17. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, so the wolverines and rats are going to take cover and try to start shooting at you as well. Three of the rats pull out the bows. The wolverines don't have bows, just one has a giant, basically looks like uprooted tree. And the other one has a, a nice battle axe. I imagine I have some level of cover from being, you know, up a tree behind it. Well, you had to sh get out to shoot at them, too. Yeah, but I can use the rest of my movement to get back behind the yeah. tree again. Yeah, so they'll... Um... Yeah, okay. So they'll roll with disadvantage, then. Um... Oh, no, I think cover only grants a little bit of AC. Does it give you plus two to AC? Uh, let me check real quick, because I think so. I think it's two AC. Half cover is two AC, three quarters is five. Okay. So we'll say you're half cover. So what's your AC? Uh, half cover gives me 21. 21. Okay, so the arrows, two of them are whiz right past you. Uh, and as you're kind of looking at one of them that whizzes right past your head, another one pff, catches you in your shoulder. Dealing. Uh, it, it's very shallow. Dealing only two damage. All right. And back to Holt, Gilderoy, and Nethaus. You three roll initiative. Ten. That's a ten. As you guys are charging on this small rat group and uh, fox. The fox is the first to act as he reaches into his pouches, uh, of which he has many slung all around him. And... Um, pulls out 
some powder that he then throws at you guys. And as this powder like hangs in the air, you can see him making motions with it, and then it starts to crackle. And kind of form like a, a, a mini storm cloud. Um, and from there, lightning will shoot right towards you guys. Sorry. Sorry. So all of you guys need to make dexterity saving throws. Uh, 19. 12. Uh, 13. Okay. Okay, so Gilderoy, you got 19? Yep. <clears throat> this, as this lightning crackles towards you guys, it hits Pult square in the middle, kind of, and then jumps out of him and only brushes against you as it goes through and hits Nethaus directly also. So, Nethaus and Holt, you take 27 damage. And Gilderoy, you take half. Ow. <laughs> Ouch. This fox is screaming at you, guys. <clears throat> you damn Heartlanders, you will all die! Um, and... It is. Uh, sorry, can you guys give me what you rolled? You both, two of you rolled ten, and Baron, you rolled twelve for initiative. So, Baron, you're up. Um, about how far away is this guy from me? Uh, they are about 150 feet away. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you guys are running towards him. Yeah, I. I'm going to um, use my full movement to kind of close the gap between them, which my movement is 55 um, at level six. Sweet. So I am going to um, use a key point to utilize my, uh, I guess I can just do it without using a key point. I'm just gonna ready a dodge, um, ready to dodge. Uh, hide behind a tree or something. Okay, cool. You monk your way right into the middle of these fucking rats and fox. Um, and then, you know, you're like... Oh, if they're 150 stance. feet, I'm only going to be able to move. Um, like, oh, 55. I thought you were dashing no, all the way over there. I'm going to... Okay. I see. Not, I got you. I'm not going to over-exert myself first thing, so... Okay, I see. So, um, yeah, you're like phew, phew, yeah. jumping from tree to tree. Yep, yeah, basically. Cool. <clears throat> cool. Uh, Holt. So, I don't know visioning, but what I'm looking at is just like six rats and a fox just watching as Holt runs the entire like 300 yards towards him to swing his head and screaming the entire time. He took the brunt of that, like he did not hesitate at all. He just, he just charged through it and kept running. So yeah, this, so they're, they're, this Fox thinks he's so big and badass, and you know, 
as you're charging, he's just telling his rat troops to to hold, hold fast, you know, like stay, stay, we got this. Um, and so he, you know, conjures his lightning bolt, blasts you, and is now shitting himself as you continue running towards him. Yeah, and uh, I, I, you mentioned that they were 150 feet off. I, I don't think I'm going to, unless I dash, I'm not going to get up to them. You're not going to reach them? With, within this turn, no. So, um, Rage, that's a bonus action, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I, so I'm just going to want to rage from a bonus action and just keep on running. Okay. Action as a dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to do that. So uh, I go the full 80 feet. Fuck yeah. So halfway there, more or less. Because my speed is 40. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Neth House? That's my turn. Cool. Neth House, you're up. Well, I only have one spell that will really reach that far anyway, so guess what I'm going to cast? <laughs> Sleet Storm? Sleet Storm. Great. 40 foot radius. Everybody in that area, when they go to make an action, they must make a deck save or fall prone. Any Ooh. spellcaster that tries to cast a spell must make a concentration check or fail the spell. Ooh, nice. <coughs> okay. Um, so you're back there. Sleet Storm looks... And I'm moving behind a tree once I've cast that spell. <laughs> Smart. Good. Okay. So as you conjure this sleet storm, the fox kind of like starts to move back behind his rat line. Then he tells the rats to form a line with their spears, all kind of like pointing towards it as the rats are trying to take the commands of this fox leader. They all have to. You said roll dexterity saving throw? Or yep, fall versus a 15. Okay. And only. Oops. And only two of the. as four of the rats just knock their spears into the, the other's legs and trip and fall and are prone. And only two of them are able to ready their spears and the bolt. Um, and we will go over to Sylvia. Uh, do I see any thickets nearby or anything that might be difficult terrain? Um, yeah, for sure. You can, but you're up a tree right now. Yeah, I know. I can, you know, jump from this tree, try to get over to the difficult terrain. Are the trees close enough together that I could jump from tree to tree? So, uh, the the trees, yeah. I mean, the branches are like walkways for you. They're pretty big. All right. Um, I will taunt them something like, uh. I guess none of you learned how to actually shoot those bows, huh? And then I'm just going to run. Uh, how far away is the difficult terrain? Um, well, if you want to, I mean, if you want to get back on the ground, you're going to have to climb down. Uh, I want to get up further on the tree and go in that direction. Oh, to like behind some leaves? Yeah, I, I want to get over to where the difficult terrain is, so if they want to follow me, they either have to climb trees or go through the difficult terrain. Okay, great. Um, 
Yeah, you just start climbing into the canopy of the tree, then. Yeah, but how far away is the stuff? If it's like 200 feet away, that's way too much time. I'm not going to bother. Uh, to continue climbing up the tree for difficult terrain, to get to difficult terrain for them, I would say is at least 90 feet. All right, I will use my cunning action to dash, my movement to move, and my action to dodge. Okay. Um, and you are able to get to the difficult terrain, but have not yet started moving through it. So you're up this tree. The wolverines start to yell at the rats to... A few of them climb that tree as the wolverines and a few other rats with spears start to surround the base of the tree that you're in. Then we will go over back to the group on the path and the fox sees that his rats are stumbling all over themselves and he's just like, fuck this, that didn't even hurt that badger, I'm out. And he's going to tell the rats to get your asses up. Hold that badger off like your life depends on it. And he's fucking hightailing it out of there. Um, he's going to... Hmm. Uh, try to run with that dexterity check and he also slips and knocks himself prone just slipping on this sleet storm ice oh that's devastating uh go ahead gilderoy um seeing that everyone is kind of tripping over themselves i think um gilderoy would i got like roughly a hundred feet between me and them. So I would uh, use my action probably to dash to catch up with Holt um, and kind of pass him. And uh, I guess I would just uh, probably use a key point to ready my patient defense. So I'm kicking it. Okay, cool. Um, Charles, does the sleet storm also make your allies have to roll the dexterity to move? I'm pretty sure. They get in that area, yes. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't so, go into the sleet storm. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're just like outside the area. Yep. Um, okay, Holt. Okay, uh, the sleet storm. In order to attack the fox, would I have to enter the sleet storm in order to attack the fox? Yes. And Physically. the rats are between you and the fox. You could okay. run around it. Yeah, you could run around it. Nah, I'll uh, I'll run into it. Uh, <laughs> In a raid. <laughs> uh, there was some apprehension with that one. Uh, I guess I'll run into it. <laughs> nah, nah. Holt is going to run straight for that fox and uh, make two attacks on the fox. Okay, so you got to try to get through the um, rats, the two rats with their spears ready too. So um, they will get okay. opportunity attacks against you. And he's standing? Yeah, the other four okay. are prone. Um, and you'll have to roll to, to get to the fox also. It's a good thing I have uh, deck saves for things that I can see. Uh, uh, it's also nice. heavily obscured and difficult terrain. Like, this is f fucked up shit. You don't want to go into it, man. 
So just let me get 100 feet from him, and I can let a lightning bolt off. Then I can let the spell down, and we can all drill him. <laughs> that fox hurt me. I'm attacking the fox. Yeah. Seventeen on my deck save. Okay, that that makes it. The opportunity attacks against you. One strikes true, and with the spear that was readied, he's going to deal thirteen damage. As you, as you know, you kind of like run into the spear, probably ripping it out of his hands okay, as you only pull past both of these. Rats, and now you are on the fox. Okay. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has seen the movie of uh, Barton Fink, but I imagine this scene and just sprinting down that hallway on fire. <laughs> and I'm just going to raise my flail and just bring it down twice onto the fox's head. And wait, do I get advantage for both these tasks? Because it's pr the fox is prone. Yeah. All right. I mean, but it's canceled out see, by the disadvantage of being in a heavily obscured Ooh, area. That's the uh, wait. The heavily obscured. The um. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You can, you go ahead and get advantage, Jonathan. But what's I'll the? Let, I'll let Philip make the call on that. What's the heavily obscured area? I'm not even sure what. I spell. Everything inside the sleet storm is difficult terrain and heavily obscured, like it was fog. Do you know the so, fog cloud spell? The fog cloud spell is basically here. Plus difficult terrain, plus okay. caster checks. It's not a good thing to be in. I see. Okay. Um. So. I would have to agree that it's canceled out then, uh, if that's, yeah. It, so you are just rolling regular. Sorry, Jonathan. Well, that, that's fine. I'll, I'll just, yeah, I'll just, I'll just take the, don't worry about it. I have two attacks, so I'm just going to take those two rolls that I just did. Um, with the flail, it's going to be a 17 and a 24. Holy shit. Um... Go ahead and describe the death. Uh, so <laughs> I want the rats to just look around and just see this hulking form over their leader, just like turning the X into like a red paste on the ground with a flail. I look, I look like sort of monster out of myth just in this sleet storm just ripping oh my gosh fucking epic um jeez nethos <laughs> what are you gonna do i'm just gonna take my full movement and dash up and get in closer range um and hold and okay. I'm going to try to move to, like, let's say the right. That way I might be able to get an angle on those rats if I have to. Yeah. If right. I can hit more of them with a lightning bolt and not necessarily hit him. Sweet. Sounds good. Um, and the rats, many of which were knocked prone, uh, are all going to take their movement action to get up. Um and, you know, they're just going to try to start running, but they have to take their movement action to get up. So uh, a, f a couple of them will actually just, in the last-ditch effort, try to chuck their spears towards you, Holt. Um, what's your AC? Uh, I only have an AC of 11. My dex is shit, so... Okay, yeah, so they all just, like, you, you know, you have your flail, and you've just 
crushed their fox leader. And so they're just like getting up with their spears, like, oh shit, throwing it so that they can run. Um, and all three of them are able to hit you. Dealing. Are you, are you remembering they have disadvantage? Uh, no. Okay, they still all three hit you. That was with a yeah AC eleven, pretty low. He's starting to look like a porcupine. <laughs> exactly. Um, only dealing a total of ten damage between all three spears. All right, all right. It's not too bad. Uh, okay, so um, we will go ahead and move back to Sylvia. Surrounded at the base of your tree, and you see some rats climbing up uh, a tree about 120 feet away. Mm. <clears throat> Let's see. Do I have, can you properly defend yourself while climbing? Or can I shoot them with sneak attack while they're climbing? Um, I'm not sure if you would have sneak attack because they can see you, but I, there are like enough branches for you to stop climbing at any point and, and get a shot off. Uh, Can I just share I? an image I had? Yeah. I can just imagine like a chipmunk thief running around a tree, like circling, like, you know, they have the videos of the chipmunk circling the tree, getting away from the dog or the cat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like he's a, he's a rabbit. Just like, this is a giant oak tree. So, you know, you're just like <sighs> scrambling to different branches. Okay. Um, I, But there's leaves around where I'm at now, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there enough leaves that I can hide? You can move into the difficult terrain and hide, yeah. All right. I'll use my movement to move, my cunning action to hide, and then my standard action to try and get a sneak attack shot off. Okay. So since you are, like, obscured mm -hmm. by it... Um, difficult for you to see them too. Uh, I mean, I can poke my face through the leaves a little bit and see, right? It's yeah, it's it's difficult if you want to. So they're gonna just have half cover. We'll just give them plus two, which you you'll still crush them. Go ahead. Um. 21 to hit. Okay. Four. It's 12. Plus four, 16 damage. Okay. And you peg off another one. Yeah, I hit him. Actually, one shot, one kill. Hits him in the shoulder, and so he lets go with his hand, and then he just falls down the tree. All the damage is actually from falling damage. Nice. Just splats right on the ground. Um, the wolverines at the bottom of your tree will start to <laughs> climb up. Um, they're moving much slower than you are. Um, and the rats at the tree will at the bottom of that tree will start to climb up also, but they're much more ad adept crawling past and around to the wolverines. And then the rats on the other side of the tree, there are uh, only seven of them now. So um, they, two of those will post up and try to shoot at you and you have half cover, so what's your AC? Uh, it's 21 with half cover. Okay. And 
these well-trained rats one of them fires an arrow and misses you but the other one is able to glance right towards you dealing five damage all right now this puddle of blood quivers and for its turn since the fox is obliterated and Gilderoy, what would you like to do having seen this fox just splatted into the ground? So their leader is crushed. The other rats are trying to flee. Yeah, and you so Holt like bolt through the rats to crush the fox, and you're on the outside of this, so the rats are going to be moving away from Holt, which means likely trying to move past you when they well, need to move. Is there is the sleet storm still going? Is that still a factor? Yes, but all you have to do is tell me to stop and I can stop concentrating. Well, I mean, if they're gonna turn and run away, they might, you know, fall again. So maybe um can I kind of make out the direction where the i seen like the group uh, split off from this part of the yeah go group. ahead uh roll perception oh, first nat 20 of the night well fuck yeah so you basically w- kind of see as you're hiding that a bunch of brush has been trampled um and that a large portion of this group must have gone off that direction. You saw them go off. And so now you're seeing and you see Wolverines and rats starting to climb a giant Oak far down the way. Um, And you also see some rats adjacent Oak tree. I'm going to, um, uh, how far away is that from me? That is about 500 feet away from you. Well, I'm going to have to dash that way then. Maybe, okay. you know. Pew, 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 pew. They, Sorry. The others went that way. I will catch up with you later. You know, look to Neth House. You know, make sure he doesn't crush everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so boom. And take off, yeah. You head off that way. Um, and Nethaus. Or, sorry, Holt. What do you do? As you see your buddy Gilgor- Gilderoy bound <laughs> um, off. So, uh, do you... Yeah, no, I, I trust Gilderoy. He's going to do his own thing. But um, these rats that are around me, like, they're still all around me. So did the sleet storm yet they have not exited Correct. the sleet storm but they're all on their feet um so i'm going to uh yeah i'm going to uh just start one i'm going to uh deal three attacks to one of them Okay, three and, attacks uh, to one of them. Uh, again, would, would that get disadvantage? Yeah. Yes. Would uh, would that in the fogged area? Uh, the disadvantage. Fog area. Yeah. Okay. What's the AC I need to beat? Um, these well armored rats eight have an AC of eighteen. They're carrying shields. Eighteen. All right. Okay, so that's a miss. That's a... Um, so I got one hit. And I got... Yeah, another miss. So uh, one of them hits. So that's... Okay. Yeah, that's going to be nine damage. Nine? Yeah, nine. <clears throat> okay. You swing your flail around crunching the shield breaking it bowling through and the rat just kind of 
collapses. And you you kill it. Um, All right, and uh, let's see. Yeah. All right, Nethouse. All right, that's my turn. Okay, so three of the rats are trying to come out of the ice storm, and then two of them are still in it, right? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Can I hit more than three of them with the lightning bolt and then not hit Big Bruiser? You've kind of angled yourself, so you can hit um, probably four of them because they were trying to form a line. And so you can hit four of them without hitting Holt. I almost hate to waste the lightning bolt at this point. Um, yeah, to heck with it. I'll let it off. All right. They roll dexterity at disadvantage. And what's the a uh, DC? Fifteen. Oh my gosh! I never roll like this when I'm a freaking player. Wow. Okay. Um, and what damage? Twenty-four points of damage. Ah, uh, doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. So you hit one of them just right dead on. And as the lightning bolt just continues through it, the other three all like leap, try to leap out of the way. And they're just kind of like scrambling on the ice. And they manage to, to almost escape it. But as the lightning bolt is just kind of crackling past them, it's still enough to kill all four as they just collapse on to into the fog on the ice. <laughs> Fucking epic. Point of inspiration. Um... And the last rat is just, or yeah, the one that you couldn't hit is going to try to run, and he is just cowering, slips on the ice, probably pisses himself. Pathetic. As we um, pan back to Sylvia. Um. So, how hard would it be to jump to a tree that doesn't have rats on it? You can scurry to a tree that doesn't have rats on it. It would be, um, like, if you want to jump on a branch, you know, we'll just have you make an acrobatics check. Okay. Too bad it's not a flying squirrel. Yeah. Um, and how much, how far, or how much movement do I need to get to another tree? Um, you need, since it's difficult terrain, you would have to I, spend. I ignore difficult terrain. Okay. So you could make one movement to get to where you need to be. All right. Uh, I'm going to take. I'm going to make, I'm going to walk over there. I'm trying to find another place to hide and hide in that other tree. Okay. So if you want to, you still are going to have to like jump from branch to branch. That's fine. So yeah, go ahead and make an acrobatics DC um, 15. Oh, uh, well nailed it then. I got 18. Nice. Um, so yeah, you leap over into the other tree that doesn't have rats in it and you want to try and hide. Yeah. I want to stealth so that they don't know where I am. <clears throat> Is that, and that's your bonus action. Uh, yeah, it's my bonus action. I'm going to use my, okay. actually I'm going to use that as my regular action, action and use my bonus action to keep running. 
Well, you already moved with your regular action. And I'm going to use my bonus action to move. Okay. And then I will hide with my regular action. Um, you already used your regular action to get to the other tree, though. But I thought I used my movement action to get there. Oh, movement, and then you leaped. Okay, so I had to move, and then I had to move again to jump. Yeah. Okay, well then I'll just use my bonus action to hide. Okay, cool. Go ahead and roll stealth. Uh, 22. Sweet. Yeah. And so the wolverines and rats start to climb, and the rats get to the branch where you were, but they're just like looking around, looking up, looking down. They call out to the wolverines, he must have gone to another tree. Do you see him? And the other rats across the way are like all up on their branches looking around for you. Um, and one of them says, I think I spot him over there. And uh, they will loose off an arrow. Um, and your AC with the plus five, what is 23? Uh, 24. 24? Okay. Jeez. They... Um, since I'm obscured, they also have disadvantage on perception to find me. Yeah, he rolled a 20. All right. And there's like 12 of them. I didn't roll for all of them. I just rolled five, and there was a 20 in there, so I figured one of them spotted you. But I could roll out all of them if you'd like me to. No, it's fine. I was just letting you know that they have disadvantage. Okay. Um, yeah, so they just try to fire off some, some arrows towards you. None of them make their way, way to you. They're just like firing blankly at a tree that they are pretty sure you're in. And... Um, we will flash over to Gilderoy, who is sprinting towards these trees. Having noticed that they've got something up the tree, I'm going to just have to assume that it's my compatriot here. So I'm going to, like, as I'm running over there, I'm probably, uh, you said I was 500 feet total, and I moved, like, 110 so far. Yeah. So I'm probably going to move, you know, uh, a dash action, uh, but calling out, hey, you know, over here, I'm the rabbit you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead and roll um, either performance or deception. I don't even know if I, Persuasion. I, oh, my charisma is garbage. Um, all right, we'll go with uh, Deception. Uh, 11 on the die, so... Okay. Um, as you're, like, running and yelling and kind of, like, leaping, one of the wolverines turns his head to you, and he's like, He's down there! Look! Go get them! <laughs> so they'll, you know, a few of them will start to climb down, and there's now just chaos in the ranks. They don't, they've got no freaking clue which rabbit's the real rabbit. Um, it's all funny and, games until uh, so they realize that I'm not a rabbit. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figure, you know, uh, they're, they're quite a few, you know, feet away, so this. Exactly. <laughs> They just know you've got floppy ears. Yeah, they, they see what they want to see. But yeah, I'm going to try and get their attention. And um, if I can, lead them away. Uh, it's, yeah, you, you definitely have their attention and they're, and they're starting to move towards you. It was successful. All right, cool. um, that's what I wanted to do for my turn. Cool. Holt, standing in pool of blood. As as per my usual, um, so there's only one rat left, right? Yeah, and he's like, yeah, and he's just like fetal position. Uh, 
well, all right. We need we need a little info, so I'm going to uh, ground the neck. It's just, it's like just lock an arm around him and just. I go ahead and let my this. spell go too. Nice. So yeah, Nethaus, uh, um, you know, pops up after just obliterating all of those remaining rats. Uh, you can grapple him easily, Holt. Um, he doesn't even really try to resist. Uh, he's just happy you're not killing him right now, and so. Not, not now. Yeah. What uh, do you do? You want to say anything to him? Uh, I I just say to him, uh, uh, cooperate, and uh, we might let you go. We might. Oh, please! No promises. Please let me go. I don't want to die. It wasn't me. It's the fox told us is all. Um. Well, that, that, that that's that's true. Just just tell us what you know. Nethaus, would you like to do anything? Do I have any way to know that our friend might need a hand? Um, you can roll. I mean, uh, Gilderoy kind of told you. He's like, hey, I'm going this way. To go I'll help, help follow him. Okay, so you, I'm gonna cast you're gonna cure wounds on myself real quick too. Okay, so you can cast cure wounds on yourself and uh, start to head the 500 feet where you are able to see Gilderoy like trying to get the attention of the remaining enemies to come towards him. Um, and so you start heading towards them, and Sylvia, you are well hidden in this tree um, and have since heard that maybe they think that you're not even there and there's another rabbit down there? Uh, well, that's interesting. Uh, I'm going to try and shoot one of the wolverines and then uh, move and hide again. Okay, go for it. So, uh, it can't see me, so advantage, yeah? Or yeah. Excellent. Yep. Good, because that makes... Because I rolled a 1 and a 20, so that means I crit. <laughs> nice. Much other than a 1. Uh, uh, do I roll twice or just double the die I roll? Or, or is yours was maximum and then roll, or what was yours again? Uh, just roll regular damage and double it. Okay. Complete annihilation. It's 21 doubled as 42 damage on the Wolverine. And utter destruction. So, yeah, go ahead and describe the death of this Wolverine. Well, he's he's looking completely away, and uh, I line up a shot and put a thing right into uh, uh, whatever this is right here that I'm touching. It's where the brainstem attaches to the spine. Yeah. Yeah, now it doesn't attach to the spine. It attaches to a piece of wood. Oh. Oh, man. Just... Limp body falls from the tree. <laughs> it's, it can't fall. It's stuck to the wood. He kind of just, like, you know, leaps from one branch to the other, lands on the branch, I threw him, and now it just his movements like abruptly stop on the branch um, and go ahead and uh, roll your stealth. I got a total of 20. Nice. Okay. So the Wolverines and rats that are now starting to look towards Gilderoy thinking he's the rabbit they're looking for a couple of the rats from the other tree see the wolver one of the wolverines die and are searching 
to see where the shot came from uh, to no avail. And so they're just like, there's, there's hundreds of them. They must be in the trees. Get down. We need to regroup, regroup. Um, so the rats are all climbing down the trees. The wolverines climbing down the trees. And they are all finally making it on the ground. Um, Gilderoy. Tim, you had to get out of the trees. I was going to fucking blow them out of the tree with the wind. I like how they go oh. from... There's more than one to there must be hundreds. <laughs> You're scared the shit out of them, man. You can't just kill Wolverine like that. They're, they know how squirrels work. They're afraid of these woodlanders. Just like it, you can't do it in fifth edition, but if I was in an earlier edition, I could have blew them guys back into that ice storm with the wind wall. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you're shading. So I got the attention of these guys, but I probably still have some distance in between them and I. Yep, they are like on the ground. Um, and uh, yeah, you are still what a hundred feet less than a hundred feet away because you moved twice okay um so i'm going to go ahead and try and i guess they would be able to probably move to me next so I'm going to, I'm not going to dash back, but I'm going to try and like, um, have them follow me if I can. Okay. Yeah. You can like start moving back and you see Nethaus, uh, like the chipmunk, you know, coming towards you too. I imagine since he's like a little shorter and squattier, he kind of like hobbles when, while he runs. <laughs> All right, Nath House, we need we need Holt here right now. Um, speaking of which, Holt, it is your turn. You have this rat all restrained, and you just said, "Tell us what you know." Oh, I don't know nothing. And uh, like in the middle of him, like speaking, I just like sling him around, like still holding him off that. Nethaus and Gilderoy just running off. And I'm like, uh, they, they need our help. What do you think? And how to start running off, still holding him forward like this, just into the trees. Great. Perfect. So you're, uh, yeah, moving with this, uh, not even encumbered, really. I'm going to hit a motherfucker with another motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Um, and Nethaus. You see Gilderoy running to you as there are some wolverines and rats now, like, landing on the ground from the trees. And Gilderoy's like, we need Holt! And so you turn around and you see Holt coming towards you, carrying a rat by the throat. Hey, Holt, would you like me to do the same thing as last time? It would help. I mean, I'm going to be out of third-level spells quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ice Storm again. All right, right at the where those creatures are, or probably... Coming out of the trees, yep. Okay. 20-foot radius. And it would go up the trees, too, because it goes 40-foot high. Okay. <coughs> I still think it would have been funnier to blow him out of the tree with my wind attack, though. <laughs> yeah. So um, you just, a master of weather, like they've never seen before, you conjure another storm at the base of their tree trunks. Um, and uh, Sylvia... Um, uh, well, I'm going to try and shoot that other wolverine. Okay. 
<laughs> oh my god, I quit again. Nice. Uh, I didn't roll very much damage though. Uh, 14. Well. Uh, do they count as humanoids? For yeah. Enemy? Okay, so 16 doubled is. 32. A million and six. <laughs> okay, so. That sounds more accurate. <laughs> very similar. So you loose an arrow, and this one catches him right in the middle of the back, and he rah, roars in agony, um, but, and he kind of like, you know, slouches over, and he's breathing heavily. All right, I'm not going to bother to hide this time. I'm just going to try and run down the tree. Okay, so it'll take you a few. Yeah, it'll probably take me like two turns of running, I imagine. Two... Yep, exactly. So now you start like quickly going climbing down branches. Um, these rats and wolverines, which are at the base, a few of them are caught in this uh, sleet storm, um, but a couple of them aren't. So the rats that aren't are going to kind of like back away and try to. Uh, hide behind some trees. Um, we'll say that there are four of them who aren't in it and that the other six rats and one wolverine are in it. So the four that aren't are trying to hide and um, three of them are just stumbling all over themselves, but one of them is able to kind of disappear behind a tree. And the rats that are in the sleet storm have seen that their compatriots and fox leader are slaughtered back and saw a similar sleet storm. So they're similarly afraid and are going to try and back out of this at disadvantage. And two of them are able to make their way out of the fog and ice, two of them slipping and falling. And the Wolverine is going to just stand there, panting, screaming orders at the rats around him, telling the ones who made it out to shoot the badger shoot the badger and the two who made it out are going to fire arrows at you holt they got it. they got to get around their friend first that's true so the the rat that i'm holding yeah oh nice so you, you i'll give you um man there's no quarter cover, huh? He's he's a lot smaller than you. He's not he's not helping you too much. But uh, what, let's see here. Like, just like I usually do, like a fifty fifty of if they're going to hit me or hit him. Okay, yeah, that's what I'll do. So, um, two of the arrows fly right towards you, and one of them hits their rat friend. Uh, that you're like holding up in front of you and the other one whizzes by and hits you for six damage. Mm -hmm. And the, okay. the arrow that lands in the stomach of the rat and he squeals, Oh, don't hit me! Get the bag! Oh. Um, and uh. go ahead, Gilderoy. Um, I am, I think I'm going to join the fray and I'm going to, uh, run up and attack one of the rats that is outside the sleet storm. Yeah. Great. Um, 
there are four outside the sleet storm, two in. There's one hiding. I think I'm not accounting for some rats. Who cares? They're just rats. All right, first attack is a 15 on the die for a total of... Oh, I have attacked it today. Total of 21 for my first attack. Um, second attack, we got a 7 on the die for a total of 13. And then I have an unarmed strike, um, 14. So, so your one first hit. one hit, yep. So that was just kind of like a, a spear thrust for... Eight damage. And, okay, so you shoot a rat and he drops his weapon. Which is just a spear. Screams out. Ah! Yeah, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use another key point to... Um, pair of dodge on my bonus action. Okay. Um, and then I'll, I'll do it for me. Okay. Holt, there are a few rats that uh, Gilderoy has just launched himself into. A uh, few rats have shot their arrows at you, and the wolverine is standing in the middle of this sleet storm issuing commands to all of these rats around him. Okay, yeah, so so there are rats that are outside of the sleep storm at the moment? Yep. A any that I can make my way up to right now? My, my speed is 40. Um, nope. Sorry, you need one more round to move to them because Gilderoy was just... They, they've just met with Gilderoy. What if I dash? 80 feet? Yep, you can if you dash. Okay. All right, I'm going to dash up to the closest one. And the rat that I'm holding, I'm going to grip him by the ankles. Just... Oh, okay. Um, make a... Uh... Oh, man. I guess just I would say uh, you're proficient. In, in slinging rats, but it's, it's a really large I'm, weapon. I'm, I'm proficient in motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If anyone is proficient in that, it would be Holt. Yeah. Go ahead and roll your attack. So, so that would give me a plus six, then, if I'm proficient. Yeah. That's a uh, 16. And uh, what sort of damage am I doing? So I would say um, probably a D10. And that would be to nice. both parties. But um, a 16 does not hit. So ah, damn it. Okay. You swing him around. Oh, no, wait. I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. 16 on the die. I'm sorry. It would be a 19. Oh, or sorry. Yeah. Uh, 22, 22. I don't know why well, I just said 16. That does hit then. <laughs> Fantastic. That's, that's my fault. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's a 13 damage. Oh my gosh. So both of the rats just explode as their skulls crunch together uh, and brains spew out. You've killed I both. Just look at the next one. Rat and go. <laughs> Shit. Point of inspiration. That's great. Um, oh, man. So that's one more rat. Uh, okay. Nethaus. Um, I'm just going to do a firebolt. All right. At the Wolverine um, or some rats? Not a heck with it, the Wolverine. You will be at disadvantage if you're attacking the Wolverine versus rats outside of the Sleet Storm. 
Fine, I'll attack the rats. <laughs> uh, 16. That does not hit. Well, son of a bitch. These are nimble, well-trained rats, um, even if they're still cowardly. So, um, Sylvia, you are continuing down the tree. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I'm going to... Um... Is there anyone who just happens not to seem to notice me, even though I'm not trying to hide that well? Um, their attention is definitely drawn elsewhere. So, yeah, there are, are at least a handful that don't see you. All right, I'm going to shoot one of them, and then I'm going to just keep trying to get over to where my allies are. Okay. Oh, crap, I dropped all my dice. My favorite thing to happen. Um, I got a seven on the die, so I bet I don't hit. Uh, does fourteen hit? No. Yeah, I don't hit shit. Okay. Uh, you fire an arrow past one, and just further incite the. There must be squirrels in the trees. Quickly, we need to get out of here. Um, and the Wolverine is roaring at these guys saying no no kill the badger kill the badger and um he the few rats that are kind of s still around him to just let their arrows loose towards you holt as he's just seen you destroy one rat with another um and so arrows are flying towards you with only two hitting you, dealing a total of 12 damage. Was that to me? Excuse yep. me, I'm sorry. Yep, that was to you. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Um, and... The ones that are surrounding you, Gilderoy, are going to try and stab at you. The one whose spear you knocked out of your hand, he's just going to try and straight up tackle you and grapple. So you have your dodge? Yep. What, what is it? I'm um, dodge, so anybody uh, making an attack against me is at disadvantage, I believe. Okay, so we'll do his... Athletics versus your acrobatics or athletics, and he's at disadvantage. I'm just going to confirm that. Yeah, disadvantage if I can see the attacker. Cool. So, so he, you said uh, against my acrobatics? Or athletics, whichever. All right, well, we're going to go acrobatics with 13 on the die. All right, and he lunges towards you, and you just definitely kind of push him aside. Um, yeah, and then two of the uh, uh, other guys will try to attack you, and they're at disadvantage as well, right? Yep. Okay. So the two with their spears will try to attack you, and they're just like, you know, you're just a flurry of movement that they cannot even hit. Um, yeah, so. And it is your turn. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to make an attack against uh, the one I disarmed, um, which was 12 on the die for a total of 18. So that's a hit. Total that of is a hit. Damage. And you're, you strike true. Seven damage. Yeah. Um, um, oh, describe his death. That's um, basically, the way, the way I see it, um, 
Like, I, I, this is like a downward slash, um, like across the chest, kind of splitting it, splitting him. And then I'm gonna use my extra attack for one next to him. Okay. Nineteen on the die for a total of twenty-five. Nice. Uh, for eight points of damage. All right. Um, you cut him, uh, but don't kill him. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to Fury of Blows so I can make um, two extra unarmed, or total of two extra. Nice. Uh, first one is a nine on the die for a total of 15, so that's a miss. Um, the next one is a 12 for a total of 18. And four damage. Nice. And describe his death. Um, I didn't really picture my fury of blows as like I'm, you know, like gonna put my spear down and then fight him. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like smacking him with the blunt end, and uh, my my first strike, you know, cuts him, and the the follow up just racked him across the side of the head, like blow out his. His face, I guess. Nice. <laughs> his eyes just roll into the back of his head and he falls and his tongue bleh, flaps out. Yep. I think that'll do it for my turn. Yeah, Holt. All right, uh, the Wolverine, is he still up? He is still up, issuing commands to the few rats remaining. Okay, how far is he away from me inside of the snowstorm? He's like... 30 feet away from you. You're just outside of the snowstorm. Okay. <laughs> so the rat I was using, what's left of him in my hands? Uh, so, I mean, his, most of his body is still left. It's just that it's like ragdoll crunched blood spewing everywhere. Okay. I mean, it's still whole, so I'll use that. Uh, I'm okay. sprinting. I'm gonna sprint into the snowstorm and just bash the Wolverine with okay. this body that's still in my hands. Okay, you will have to roll the dexterity once you enter, which I have advantage on because I can see it. Nice. Uh, that's a 19. And you get you're able to get to the Wolverine. All right. Here and then go. disadvantage to attack him? Well, I already have advantage on it, so it's just going to be a straight roll. Straight up? Yeah. So that's going to be um, 23 to hit. And you clock him. And is that still going to be a d10 of damage? Yeah. And he does not have much left in him. You're going to kill him no matter what. Yeah, I did seven damage. So go ahead and describe his death. So, so you know um, those stories that you'll hear of like people that have their feet hanging off of uh, roller coasters, and there'll be someone standing up underneath the track, and like they'll just kick their heads off of their bodies as oh they're going gosh. by on the roller coaster. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want that to basically happen with this Wolverine. I want to just like <laughs> just knock his head off his shoulders with the body. With the rest of the rat and you just hear uh, crunching, squirting gross nastiness as the Wolverine falls. Um, Alright. Um, and I still have uh, two attacks left. Um is there any other are there any other rats near me? Yeah, there were two rats with him in the thing. Okay, yeah, uh, so I'm going to actually like chuck the body down cuz it is like a two use thing. And I'm just going to pull my flail back out and just like try and hit each rat. Okay. If at all possible. Yeah. Do it. Yep. Damn, uh, so I got an 18 for one and a critical miss for one. One hits. Um, well, with the critical miss, 
yeah okay so um we're and you're still using the the bloody pulp dead rat as a weapon or you're using your flail now i, I chucked the body i used the, um i pulled out my flail sweet okay so uh we'll let you hit one and the one that you miss we're going to say that that um breaks the chain on your flail okay so you have right basically a club but no longer a flail and you but you were able to hit the other one first okay so i did four damage to the one that i that i hit four yeah four damage sorry say that again yeah four four damage four damage okay yeah Perfect. um and so when the chain breaks when i sort of like fling it back around is it hurling towards any of the other rats the head of the flail uh no it like you whipped it crunched this rat's foot and then it was like on the ground and then when you went to rip it up it was like it got stuck in the ground and the chain just snapped hmm hmm okay all right and that's why when you went to hit the other rat you missed because you were expecting the ball and chains to be on there. Um, yep. So go ahead, Nethaus. <sighs> How many rats are still up? Uh, Holt's got two around him, and Gilderoy has two around him. And then um, there was one that hid, and uh, so just four rats left. <clears throat> Who looks like they're having more of a trouble with the rats on them? Uh, it doesn't really look like either one's having trouble. On the hell, I'll, I'll I'll throw a firebolt at one of the ones Holt's dealing with. Okay. At disadvantage since Ooh. it's into the storm. Son of a bitch! And I rolled like a twenty-two on the first one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I got lucky. Seventeen on the second one. Okay. One of Damage, them that hit. Uh, yeah, one of them dropped a shield. That'll hit. Okay, uh, eleven points of damage. Okay, and you kill that one. Uh, basically, we we'll just kind of cinematically go through this fight. You guys can kill off the remaining ones if you would like or do whatever you'd want. Uh, we'll just go ahead and go with Sylvia. You've landed on the ground. You see most of the rats and the wolverines are dead. There's a few rats left. What would you like to do? Do you want to kill one or do you want to do something else? Um, I'm going to go up to uh, crap. I forgot. I'm going to drop my spell too. You're okay. The snowstorm stops. What is uh? Man. And you see steam rising from the rat bodies that are and the Wolverine body that's strewn in the <laughs> middle of the forest grass. What is the uh, pair's name again? Gilderoy. That's right, Gilderoy. Uh, Sylvia's gonna come up next to Gilderoy, and by come up next to, I mean she's gonna put her sword through a rat next to Gilderoy, and then, uh, flick her blade cleanly, and be like, oh, you're the, uh, other rabbit over here. Thanks for the assist. Hey, I figured, you know, up in a tree wasn't where you needed to be, so... Yeah, so we're out of combat now. You guys can just kind of 
take care of the rest cinematically. Well, Sylvia, you were scouting ahead. What did you manage to find? We heard a terrible cry come from the Oswego. Yeah, they, uh, the rats, they captured the Firebird. It's, it's not good stuff. It's No, that sounds like terrible stuff. It's terrible stuff. Um, I don't exactly know what we're going to do about this. I guess we need to go report back, but there's too many of them to stop them right now. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I agree. Damn, that pizza looks good. <laughs> um, Holt and Nethaus, you guys see Sylvia bound down from the tree, go over to Gildroy and kind of help dispatch of those rats. Uh, what would you two like to do with the remaining rats? I actually imagine we're just casually chatting as we kill the rest of the rats. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no. Like, so there's one rat still left, like, next to Holt, because I, I believe the other one was killed off by Nethouse. That's right. And, yeah. like, Holt is just standing there, like, drenched in blood with, like, arrows just poking out all of him. He's got a, a spear. <laughs> he, got, he has a spear, like, poking out of his ad, abdomen, and he's just, like, staring down at this rat. Just like breathing really heavily, and he's just going to grab the rat by the neck. I feel like it's almost drag. being instinctual at this point, but Gilderoy is hopping on, you know, tending to the gratuitous amounts of wounds that you have acquired in the combat. Yeah, no, definitely. And uh, Nethaus? I think we need a short rest. I'm just saying, you know, 20-something points of damage I took did not feel good. Yeah, I probably would be I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have said that. Lightning bolt kicked my ass, okay? <laughs> we should probably go back and regroup with our mall friends, really. Maybe. Yes, uh, they're still back there. Maybe, you know, rendezvous with them and lick our wounds before we head back out. Okay, so you guys are able to. Uh, so Holt, is there anything you want to do with the rat, or just crush oh, his throat? Well, no, I'm holding. I'm not crushing him. I'm holding on to him. Iron, iron grip, but I'm holding on to him. We need information from this rat, whatever he has, because I killed off the one that I was going to interrogate. But <laughs> yes. okay, so you can kind of just like make him pass out. Um, Ooh, I just thought of evil way to torture him. You know the, well, the spell flaming spear? Just lay him on it, his back on it. And just <laughs> oh, man. Um, exactly, Baron. Uh, so you guys have made the rat pass out and you head back to the mole caravan um, the moles said the moles kind of like pushed the wagon off behind a tree and were trying to cover it up and hide it as best they could while you guys were out slaughtering rats, foxes, and wolverines. And so they're just like, well, thanks for taking care of that. We, uh, yeah, let's uh, get this stuff back to the camp. Uh, wow, guys, you, you sure took a beating. And they're kind of just like, looking up and down at the badger just like damn um and we'll go ahead and take a short break as your characters take a short rest before heading back oh, are you talking to us alexander no i wasn't oh sorry
What's up, everybody? Um, tuning in. This is an RWD Gaming channel video of our setting of Fur and Fury that Philip and I are working on. Um, hoping, I have been saying this a lot in every video, but hoping to get something playable for others to try out in here soon. So, uh, rolling what's best in that one. Or disadvantage, if you will. So far, so good. We managed to slay some rats there. Quite a few, actually. Cool. All right, so... Yeah, so you guys are all at the caravan, and um, you have this unconscious rat and moles eager to get to some sort of safety, uh, which to them is back in their burrow, so. Which, I don't remember exactly, but do we end up going to the mole town, and we had pick these guys up to come back with supplies. You rendezvoused with them from the mole town and they expected you guys to take the caravan the rest of the way, but you convinced them to to <laughs> pull it for you. Hey, no, you should do that. <laughs> no, I, I literally gave them a bunch of gold and an emerald necklace and they were like, okay, and we pulled the cart. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of motivated for me. Yeah. Well, I would imagine um, we would probably uh, tie this rat up. Um, I don't know if we're questioning him ourselves, or are we taking him back for a higher authority to question? That's well, up to you. I'm rolling. Uh... Some hit dice to try to get hit points back. I don't know about the rest of you, but okay, yeah. yeah. Go I ahead and take a short rest. Yeah, yeah. I only got hit by a lightning bolt, so yeah. only you lightning. You got bolt. hit by a lightning bolt. Fuck <laughs> you, you big monster. <laughs> I was I was down to ten hit points, so from sixty, so yeah, you were taking a beating there for a minute. Yep. What? Is because I didn't rage at first, and then that lightning bolt hit me. Which I mean, I wouldn't have been able to 
resist it anyway because I'm not up that high level for resistance, but still. Yeah, that lightning bolt, that, bust, that messed me up good. Yeah. You guys were lucky the fox slipped and you took him out so quickly. Yeah, no, I knew that oh. fox was going to be trouble. So we also, lucky, I had a couple fox was that's... he lucky? Because I was going to try to get closer and try to do gust to win to blow a storm apart. Oh, nice. I know why they did it, but it's so frustrating sometimes because you can only do one concentration spell at a time. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, so, yeah, I, I would like to uh, tie this rat up like as, as well as possible. Yeah, go ahead and <clears throat> make a... Um... So are you proficient um, with um, sleight of hand? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, so just make an intelligence check then. Just a straight intelligence check? Yeah. Mm, that's a 10. Okay. Noted. All right. Uh, I don't know if I like it when the DM says noted. <laughs> uh. I'll save that for later. You tie up the rat. Yep. Well, <laughs> and I'll, do, I'll just look at the rest of the group just tiredly, like I'm covered in bandages from head to toe that are just weeping blood. Um, and I'll just say, uh, I don't know about you lot, but I'm in no mood to question this one. I say we take him back to camp. Well, I can question him for you, or we can question him back at camp. Yeah, I'm, I'm in no position to question anybody, I guess, myself. So, I, I might vote for camp. Great. The mold are... House, what about you? Well, I think we better get out of this area before we run into more of these uh, scouting parties or whatever you want to call them. I agree. The moles are also eager to reach the objectives so that they can scurry back to their burrows. Um, so you guys head out along the path um would any of you like to to do anything go slowly or anything i still want to scout ahead of the caravan okay so you can go ahead and kind of move along forward um go ahead and roll perception or um yeah perception Uh, I did not. All of us? Uh, I got... Just Sylvia, she's scouting ahead. No, 12. I got 12. All clear ahead. You guys are still about three hours, three or four hours from the refugee camp. Um, several miles. If we have a second, Gilderoy would probably um, walk up next to the moles and just kind of uh, pick them a little bit about how they feel of the conflagration in the heartlands. Um, how have the moles been affected? Are they you know, in as dire straits as everyone else? Obviously not if they have food, but you know, what is their plan that these things now a fire word? So, yeah, the moles are <clears throat> as they're pulling the cart along and you're kind of, you know, chatting them up. They're like, yeah, well, we're okay. 
Fire can't reach underground. I I can see that, but um, well, what happens if they try and smoke you out? Are, are you ready for more than just fire, I guess? Because if there's occupancy space in your town and it seems to be the safer spot, we might benefit from moving these refugees from a camp into a, a set location. Uh, yes, well, that's not for us to decide. Uh, uh, that's between Beatrice uh, uh, and the Mole King. Uh, uh, there you go. Well, I will see what I can persuade them and kind of hop back up on. I probably wouldn't hop on the cart if they're pulling the cart. <laughs> yeah, that would, be, that would be that much of a dig. <laughs> but. Yeah, um, I got nothing really. Kind of just uh, distraught that our enemies have a large fire deity in their possession. So, Sylvia, you're scouting ahead and um, back at the uh everyone can hear a loud screeching and sylvia uh how far ahead do you, are you scouting um i mean i'm not really good with distance but like maybe five minutes ahead okay not even like five minutes like yeah i can't see them right but i like if yeah. i stood still they would get to me in five minutes okay cool so um you guys all hear the the screeching and you look up towards the skies and you don't see anything would we recognize the screeching as something we've heard before yeah it's the screeching of oswego for sure mm, solid um, I am going to go ahead and try and climb the nearest tree to get some sort of visual um, where this would be coming from. Okay, for sure. Um, 14 on the die for acrobatics for a total of 20. Yeah, you're able to climb to the top of a tree, no problem. And um, go ahead and make a perception or investigation. Make an investigation. Sixteen on the die for a total of investigation seventeen. Okay, so you can see pretty far off um, that a lot of the army, the rat army, has assembled, um, and it is. Um, basically making camp and you can see that the bird is like in chains but it's burning into this uh, giant oak tree like at the base of it and um, basically uh, starting another fire the yeah God yeah, damn it. Uh, the giant, yeah, and so not necessarily starting a, another fire, but it's trying to burn out this tree, and um, you see the army over there, you see a few miles ahead, the refugee camp, they're pretty far apart, and you don't see anything that looks to be in between you and the path back to camp. Um, so I'm going to you know, hop back down. And they seem to be amassing their armies into one horde. Um, they have this Oswego tied to a large oak. It seems to be in pain, I would imagine. Um, I think we should really hightail it back to camping. 
not allow this to continue. And at that point, I think I would actually probably help start pushing the car. Okay, great. Holt and Nethaus. Uh, yeah, G Gilderoy sort of shares Holt's sentiment. Um, he actually gets, uh, uh, actually braces up against the back of the car and starts back there as well. I'm good with that plan. Fantastic. You guys are the moles, uh, start to cheer. Hey, yeah, let's go. And you guys pick up speed as you are making your way back to the camp. Um, you make your way without incident. And you guys are greeted by many cheers from the inhabitants of the camp as you as the moles come and you know have brought all these barrels of October ale and apples and fresh fruits and fish and grub of all sorts, broccoli and veggies and I think we probably try to like maintain like the the uh, atmosphere of that kind of you know chipper um, while you know keeping focused and trying to break away from the crowd as we leave probably the moles to distribute the food or whoever would be in charge of that. And we need to go talk to Beatrice with our uh, friend here. Great. So you're able to uh, pass off the cart distribution responsibilities to the cook and um, <clears throat> supplies. And I almost picture like two guards coming up and like lifting this mouse. So he's like feet aren't even like touching the ground and we got two otters or something. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, um, you guys are all able to make your way to the main area where Beatrice is. Well, we've retrieved the food. Um, we have also acquired some information about our enemy. Ah, you be yes, thank you, heroes. Once again, you returned victorious. I'm going to have to stop you right there, Beatrice. We aren't really victorious as of right now. They have an Oswego captured. What? Yeah. Oswego has been born? Not only that, he is captured. This is worse than I thought. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, we haven't managed to get much out of uh, this one, kind of pointing at the, the prisoner. We figured you would be much more inclined to want to handle that here. But their numbers are quite large. They're amassing a huge horde to the north. Um, it's not looking too cool. Uh, Beatrice tells the otters to set the rat down and tie him up. Um, and she looks at him and he's still unconscious. And she calls for some... Uh, she calls for some name towards the otters, and they quickly rush out and bring back in a uh, cloak stooped um, like... A porcupine who just, like, lays on people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... um, She's... You can't really see the face because the hood is over the long snout. Um, and she walks very slowly... And Beatrice says, yes, over here, rouse him and make him talk to us. Um, I want all of you guys to roll perception. I have uh, bamboo. 
bamboos. Little tiny pieces of bamboo we could use to torture him. Uh, 19. 15. I got a total of 10. Okay. Um, so, if you rolled over 15, you are able to tell that this creature is a fox. And um, Beatrice seems to be talking pretty familiar with this fox. Um, and the fox is bringing out all of these herbs and potions, um, liquids, and just kind of mixing some stuff, throwing it in the cauldron on the fire. But always like trying to stay, like not really looking at anyone, just completely involved in her task. And Beatrice explains to you guys, this fox came to us and is seeking protection from Volmer and the Rat Army. Of course, we granted it. She's very useful and can make a truth serum to make this rat speak of the plans. Ah, I've always been weary of foxes myself. But I suppose a truth-telling fox is better than a non-truth-telling fox. My grandfather always told me you can trust a fox as far as you can throw them, and us rabbits can't pick them up. <laughs> Your grandfather was a wise man. Could he have been a hare? No, he was wise. He was clearly a rabbit. <laughs> a holt just groans up underneath his bandages after that. <laughs> The fox is just ignoring you guys um, and moving around you, you know, like your whole this all seems to be always in the way. And she's just like, you know, kind of like bumping you guys, trying to not pay you any attention as they make the truth potion. She hands it to Beatrice. Beatrice tilts back the head of the rat, opens its mouth and dumps it in, and then closes the rat's mouth as it starts to cough and then drinks it and open he immediately starts to ah, ah, what is this what do you what, what do you want from me get out get me out of here all right rat it is time you tell us what balmer is planning <laughs> Volmer, what Volmer is planning is a delightful feast. <laughs> yes, with with the bread now served and gone. <laughs> what we need to do is take the cake. And once we take the cake, we roast the potatoes. <laughs> there will be wine and beer for all. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to roast him. That's all I gotta say. Right, you're going to speak plainly now, or you're gonna lose a finger. Who is the potatoes? <laughs> Who is the potatoes? <laughs> Who are on, the man, potatoes? The Irish. <laughs> the potatoes will be roasted. I didn't say what they will be. I said, who are they? Listen. <sighs> the potatoes will be roasted. All right. Um, I, I grip... I imagine he's tied into a chair, so I, I grip like one of his hands that are tied to the chair, and I just pop a finger off of one of his hands. <laughs> um, the fox says, it's not his fault. He's delirious. This truth potion 
does not make them speak plain truth. Well, it's evident enough who the potatoes are. Everyone in this camp are the potatoes. That's obvious enough. I wanted to hear it from his own lips. Well, apparently what this a... magic potion is less useful than conventional torture. Ah, uh, I wasn't torturing the poor bastard. I was merely knowing I was merely telling him that he was pissing me off. No. Torture doesn't get you any straight answers either. They can tell you whatever they want. Just to make the pain stop. All right, Rat. So I'm going to uh, need you to go ahead and say your riddle again, because, you know, missed it. <laughs> um. The bread has been eaten. All right, so that's, that's Heartland City, Oak City. And soon there will be beer and wine for all, but... But we must, we must get the cake, and we will also roast the potatoes. All right, the cake probably is some royalty. I think. I think the cake is Oswego. Could be. Could very well be. That's what I was assuming. Don't we have uh, some document? That, uh... Yeah. Yes, I have this list written oh, in badge, yeah, list. basically listing out everything he's blathering on to us. Oh, I forgot. Oh man. <laughs> uh, thanks for remembering that, guys. That, that makes it easier. <laughs> I'm fucking sitting here trying to decipher this thing with no context. We have a list. Um, do we have this writ list written down somewhere? I do not. I had it written down, but I don't know where my note cards are. So, Philip, do you have a copy of that list still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, basically, uh, Marl Fox is bread. Oswego is beer. Anne Loff is cake. Edward is potatoes. And Nikonicum is wine. Okay, so... Uh, we're, we're, we are looking for Edward then, because he's the potatoes. So after, the, basically the rat is just like saying the same things over and over again. Um, and eventually... He's just like getting really hot and feverish and sweating and kind of like his head's just like rolling back and forth. And after a while, he just kind of like <sighs> passes out again. Well, I think that's about as much as we're going to get out of him. But uh, it seems like they already have the beer. We killed the bread, so they're looking for Anwar, I think that's what it was called, and Edward, so. Yeah, Anloff is the Anloff. cake, 
and Edwards is potatoes. All right, so uh, I'll look to Beatrice and ask her if you any idea where Edward would be. No, we haven't seen him since he left with you guys. Mm. That's not true. You saw that he was captured. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. We did see that. <laughs> we did see that. Um, he he's in the grass of Volmer. Shit. Yes, and I wanted to go save him, and you insisted we had to go get food. Oh yeah, we had to go get food, which was halfway there. I remember now. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we should go. Oh. Uh, and I remember now. I only agreed to go if uh, she could send people to find Edward for us while we were gone. Did she find him? Uh, I she let you know where they were, but she was gonna go find him. Like, no, yeah, I think it was like where exactly we would have to look, kind of thing. That oh, was, like he is yeah. in the spot. Yeah, he's with Volmer and the rest of the army. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, they have a Swigo. They have a horde. And they have a pretty good uh, military outfit there going for them. This little shanty town isn't going to stand the chance whatsoever. We must evacuate. Yeah, everyone needs to move the fuck out of here immediately. I say we let them have their fun for tonight and move first thing in the morning. Righto. I would imagine then we would be doing the same to go recover Edward, I guess. I wouldn't necessarily want to put us out back on the road having just returned. I'd like to sleep in a bed. Yes, please rest. You'll need your strength. We have to get it, all of these refugees maybe to the Mole City. It's the only place that can house us safely. Uh, hopefully we can get out of here before Volmer and his army know where we are and bring us sweet well, and his wrath upon us. Well, Beatrice, that sounds like what you should be doing. We have to go confront the guy. So. Uh, the mole said you'd talk to the mole king, so we're going to leave that all up to you. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm done with my lines of questioning, so... Right. Yes. I'll do what must be done. Ha. To think just just months ago I was just a rancher on my own farm making yeah. clothes for people and now I must be leading this refugee camp to safety if I can. It works in funny ways. We are who we are and what we will be is what we will be. You're doing fine. Well, thank you for your efforts and all you've done to help the Heartlanders. We will make sure we remember you, for you will sh surely not return from Volmer. Yeah, probably right. Okay, so she kind of sends you guys off, and you can... Uh, I would totally scoop up some pie, uh, mm -hmm. would totally scoop up some ale, and I wouldn't drink to get drunk, but I'm drinking to be satisfied. Perfect. The rest of you, what are you doing? Sylvia's going to go see if she can forge some poison. Holt is, uh, I know there's no real, uh, like, smiths or anything like that here. But uh, Holt wants to try his best to find someone who can mend his flail. And so, um, you know, the race that is known for its item creation is the moles. 
So, no, there's no one in the camp who can repair your flail. But you know that those moles can probably do it. Um, yeah, so, so Holt is just going to stand there in the middle of the camp, just holding the two halves of his broken flail, just like... Just, just like seething at the camp and how useless they are. <laughs> um, so uh, he's going to try his best to find someone that's like selling weapons of any sort. Instead. Uh, instead. Um, so there are people who are selling like rakes and shovels. They're mostly like wood, though. They're not metal. Um, there's the guy who you met who, um, you know, was making nails and horse or, uh, yeah, nails. Um, but that's really all there's, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, the, you, you can go to the guards and the guards are all like, uh, we get these weapons from the shipment that just came in. Um, well, it's just like the shipment, and he, he like sprints off to the wagon, where the, where everyone's like grabbing stuff from or whatever. Nice. Um, so yeah. we'll go to the wagon and just we'll flash back to you in a in a second. <clears throat> Sylvia, uh, you on your way out to go into the forest to look for some poisons? That's what you're doing? Or do you want to look for them in the refugee camp? Uh, I doubt there's any in the refugee camp. So okay. yeah, she's going up to the forest. Okay. So these guys are dicking around having fun, and she doesn't even know what fun is. Yeah, the guards will stop you on your way out. Hey, where are you going? You don't want to go out there. What do you mean? Come on, there's, there's beer, there's wine. What do, you, what do you need to go out there for? Well, unlike you guys, I plan on actually... Defeating Fulmore. I've got to go get ready. Fulmore? Who's Fulmore? What are they talking about? These rabbits are crazy. Wait, that's its name, right? Fulmore? Yeah, yeah, but okay. these guys don't. They're, they are not in the loop. Well, I ignore them and keep going then. I don't got time for the shenanery. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you can go out into the night. Um, the moon is bright, although um, it just, it actually seems eer eerily bright, like a lot lighter than it should be. Um, and we, so Nethaus, what are, what are you doing? Who, me? Would I do anything? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what are you doing? Are you also are just going to turn into the night? We'll go back towards the, the fire thing, right? That's our plan for tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. I'm heading out. Uh, you, so you guys um, are, yeah, in the morning you're planning on going out. No, no, so no. Far. I'm going out now. Oh, okay. You're going you're out shape now. Shift uh, a wolf. Sweet. Well, no, wait. I take that back. Yeah, I will go back out as a wolf. Um, once I get, <sighs> once I get about an hour out, I want to see if I can find any animals, and then I'll make, uh, speak with animals and see if they can kind of give me an idea how many of them there are, where they're at, if there's any scouting parties out. Okay, so we'll see. We'll say that it's been about half an hour. Sylvia, you're out foraging. Holt, you're about to approach the weapons cart to go get a new weapon. Gilderoy, you're stuffing your face as you should be. It's been about 30 minutes. You guys are out doing the thing before you come back and rest. Um, and Nethaus um, and Sylvia. Make perception checks. Woohoo, 18. Woohoo, 23. Okay. So, Gotta Sylvia, you notice that it, 
a lot brighter than it should be because there's a faint orange glow hanging around the the horizon everywhere and you start to sniff and you can smell smoke uh like everywhere in house, like in all directions around me it's orange like it is yeah faint orange for basically like not all around you because behind you is the camp but like 180 degrees and you can't really see 360 uh, I turn so, around and I sprint back to camp. Okay, and Charles, I come out of wolf form. Are, oh, before I do that, is there a, uh, any birds around? Uh, sure. Okay, I come out of wolf form, and I want to make friends with one of the birds. Cast animal friendship. Okay, we're going to say that it's um, likely an insect rather than a bird. Okay, yeah, I, I keep forgetting that it's worth <clears> that. And then yeah, I no, want to use fine. bee yeah. sense and get it to fly up and let me see what it can see. Okay, so um, it's the moth flies up and you can see that there are fires that are burning that are starting to surround the refugee camp and you can see in the sky a great flame that is streaking across burning the tops of trees going back and forth trying to form a perimeter around the refugee camp okay do i see a spot that we can get out as of right now Yes, the circle is only about 180 degrees right now, not 360. But okay. the bird is trying to continually burn it. Okay. I basically tell the insect, thank you, friend, for your help, and you need to get out of here. And then I let go of the spell with him, shapes it back from the wolf because I can move faster, and or you know what? I'll even I'll go cheetah to go even faster, and then I'll head back to the camp. Okay, boom! Uh, you are headed back to the camp. Sylvia is headed back to the camp. Holt, you feast your eyes upon an as wide assortment of weapons. Uh, what what were you looking for? Well, I know that uh, like steel is kind of like short in this world. Like yeah, the, that's not really like a weapon material that they really use. So what am I? What am I looking at? What's my? What are my options here? So there are a ton of pole arms, mostly pole arms. That's like it, yeah. There's just spears and javelins and arrows, um, which are mostly just sharpened tip wood tip, um, and there is one great axe. Um, as far as like melee options go, is that my like my best option here? Um, yeah, that's gonna be your best option. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna like look and see that no one's like gonna like like give me any trouble, and I'm just gonna grip the great axe and like just swing it a couple of times just to test it out. Yeah, the guards that are like kind of around here looking at you know like getting their uh new armor and like helmets acorn helmets and um spears and stuff they see you go and pick up the axe and swing it and they all just like whoa and you know kind of step back there's no way that they're questioning you with that uh, just a couple and test swings yeah <laughs> exactly and uh the the axe has two blades and they are shaped like um mole claws like giant mole claws i i look at that and i'm like oh, that's silly and I, I sling it over my back <laughs> um and uh you can see rushing in from the gate is both sylvia and nethaus uh sylvia will say um oh shit i keep forgetting everyone's name 
Gilderoy? No, Mole. The, the mean, the badger. Oh. Holt. 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 She runs up to Holt, and like... I don't like she runs up to him and puts uh her hand like she grabs his arm and says uh they're lighting the forest on fire we have to move now right now we have to go everyone has oh, to right, we need to grab I step up we need to grab Gilderoy and I I let off a thunderclap spell up at, just up in the air above me straight ahead up and then I yeah. tell everybody get what you can grab we must go now and then I tell him to follow the light. And then I, I cast a cantrip of... Oh, what is that on staff spell? Shillele. And then I cast daylight on it, which will last for an hour. That way they have a beacon to see the head towards. Perfect. So this like small chipmunk starts... Grabs everyone's attention, starts issuing commands, and... Everyone's quiet the whole time he's issuing commands. And then there's just an uproar as pots are being overturned. Critters are frantically flying back to their tents, grabbing anything they can get their hands on. Um, Gildroy, you hear large commotion going on. I mean, I, I'm probably, like, sitting at a fire and, like... You know, noticeably, not drunk, but I'm a lot smoother, I guess I would say. Um, Lubricated. Yeah, I've, uh, maybe like the people that I was talking to have like all got up and left. I was like, what? Why is everyone leaving? Um, And I would get up and look for the badger that stands uh, above everybody by a few heads and Holt, what's going on? Why is everyone freaking the fuck out? Apparently, they're setting the forest on fire. Again? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Beatrice, um, you see now, has ran out of the command tent and is issuing commands to different people, telling them, secure the food! Everybody, make your way through. Uh, follow the light of the chipmunk. Quickly. Grab only what you need. And I think this would probably be the time where I would turn to Holt or Sylvia and be like, this is usually the time where we run in the opposite direction of everyone else, correct? Not in this case. The opposite direction of everyone else leads directly into the fire. I don't know that we can handle him or do anything about him. Oswego? No, there's nothing we can do about that. We just have to leave. <laughs> we just have to go. A thought. If they're setting a perimeter around us, would it not make sense that they would have uh, their armies set up uh, where the fire is not, waiting for the people running in the opposite direction? Um, I believe we they are the fire, so that's our only entirely option. surround us. Just a thought. If uh, we run straight into an army, don't uh, come crying to me. Oh, we are most certainly going to come crying to you. I literally stand behind you. Well, that's true. We still have better odds against the army than we do against him. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, stu- we're stuck between an Oswego and a hard place. <sighs> he said hard. <laughs> <laughs> What is it that you will do? Well, Personally, bro, bro, a hole big enough for everyone to come with me. <laughs> and we're gonna kick it until this fire thing is all over. So. Well, you can't you... solve. I'm just, I'm just yelling down the hole. You can't solve all your problems by just digging. I'll bring yes, the ale. We, must, we can we can burn our way out of this. I've got a keg. We'll fucking steal some food. We'll just ride the whole thing out. Uh, my plan was to go closer to the fire and then dig under the fire, get out, and uh, head straight over to where Edward is. 
Oh, I like that plan even better. Attack them when they least expect it. Exactly. So I don't think the rest of you can help me dig very much, but I can dig. I can let somebody else have the staff. That way it helps get them going. Well, okay. And, um, I don't care what happens to these people. She doesn't say that out loud, but like... <laughs> We all know what you're thinking. So Wait a minute. Weren't you a conscious before? <laughs> you obviously I, don't care about these people. You haven't ever kept it a secret this entire time, so why not say it out loud? Wait a minute. She's I thought, I thought Silver was the conscience. She's our angel on her shoulder most of the time. I don't know what's gotten into her today. I don't think you want $101. Yeah, I feel like in general, uh, Sylvia has always been the voice of reason and compassion. <laughs> Nothing but love and affection comes from Sylvia. Today is just an off day. I mean, didn't she like give us a dressing down a while back because we were being <laughs> assholes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading right here on her personality. Dispassionate and critical. I'm pretty sure that means nice. <laughs> That's a funny way of spelling nice. Okay, so are you guys deciding to go towards the fire, burrow underneath it, and then go and attack them when they least expect it? Uh, that's what I would like to do. Sounds like yeah. crazy fun. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning towards that as well. Okay. Um, also, uh, let's have... Um, Sylvia, roll an insight. Uh, 17. 17, okay. So you're like, man, I have to burrow under this fire. This fire line, who knows how long it is. You are doing the math and you're, you're skeptical if you can burrow all the way through and under alone um you're really wishing you had some other help from some other burrowing creatures right like maybe the moles okay i grab all the moles and i say moles moles you're with me mole squad we're rolling out let's go <laughs> Oh, oh, I don't know. Um, uh, I kind of want to go with these guys. Uh, they've got the food. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I'm. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna try and trick them into thinking that I'm in charge, and I'm going to say, uh, actually, uh, I'm in command of your group right now. Uh, we gotta go this way. You just gotta. Yeah. Go ahead. There's no time for questions. No time for me. Uh, uh. Oh shit. <laughs> Uh, I got a 19, so that is 23. Yep, they are like, oh, fine, yep, okay, well, whatever you need us to do, whatever. Mole and, squad, uh, roll out. Yeah, mole squad, roll mole out. Turns into uh, a Trans Am. <laughs> Transform and roll out. Regulators, mount How up. Are there? Four. Oh, great. I mean, do I even need all four? Um... If you explain to them what you need, they'll tell you that two will be sufficient. Okay, I'm going to have two come with me, uh, and I'm going to say, and your other two, just in case you need to burrow to get everyone safe, you go with the other guys. Remember, they say, fire doesn't go underground. You guys are the ones who told me that. <laughs> who gets to pick the straws in that one? I get to be the mole that goes toward the fire, or the one that gets to go with them? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't you rock, paper, scissors. I'm like, you guys are coming with me. There's a clear mole hierarchy, and uh, Damn it. The, the two I guys... I not fucking go. <laughs> the two guys that had to be... Like behind the front two who were pulling, the front two they get to go with the caravanners. The guys who are in the back, they have to go with you guys. And one of them is the one who you talked to, Baron. <laughs> He's probably like, man, I kind of wish I would have pushed the cart now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, he probably should have pushed the cart, bud. <laughs> so, so, 
So, um, yeah, you guys are now headed to the fire line. And um, I'm going to go ahead and say I totally did not anticipate that first fight scene taking so long. And I, my apologies for that. So I'm a little off here. And I would rather stop here and play out the rest in one session if you guys are okay with that otherwise if you want to push through this it could probably be done in an hour uh i prefer to do it in another session my dinner is about to be done cool i have various other things to do before work tomorrow so yep let's uh let's do that and thanks for bearing with me guys yeah absolutely i had a good time okay, good. Good so um so charles we're gonna do one more session after this and we're going to stop there as you guys are headed to the fire to burrow underneath sounds good all right now well if we are all set philip i'm going to send us off cool all right good time guys this, yep absolutely this has been another rolling with disadvantage uh playtest of our of Fur and Fury setting. Um, catch us next time.